So the last time you were here, and I'll tell you exactly when it was, uh, it was in May, uh, you had just released the ballad of Ian Curtis. Right. And I don't even know if you'd settled on a title for the album yet. Yeah, maybe not. Uh, it became Steel City Trawler. And how's that been going for you? Well, first of all, that came out in the summer. Yeah, June, I think, late June maybe. Uh -huh. And how's it been going? Uh, wait, is it June or is it August? It's, See, it's August. all a blur now, I don't isn't know. it? it? Yeah, it came out when it was warmer. <laughs> and I guess you've pretty much been on the road uh, the entire time. Yeah, I have, yeah. Um, if, uh, what, well, Melissa and I, my wife, Melissa McClelland, and I were out with, with Sarah McLaughlin doing Lilith Fair stuff in the summertime, sort of before, before the record. I mean, the record was out, but we weren't touring it yet. Mm -hmm. So we spent the early part of the summer doing that. We should, should clarify that you have played with Sarah in the past right. extensively. Yeah, yeah. For, for over the course of 18 years, on and off, mm -hmm. like, with, with huge gaps of not working with her and then, and then concentrated time working with, you know, Sarah and I have been good friends for like a long time. Um, and then as soon as that wrapped up, uh, I went to Europe and I did a, a month of, of dates in Europe, um, doing my own shows and also playing with Blue Rodeo because Greg Keeler wasn't well and he couldn't, he couldn't travel. So I was, I was sort of, I was Greg Keeler for uh, a, f a few weeks, which was fun. And then back to North America, did a month in, in the States, and then I just finished the Canadian tour, just wrapped up uh, the other night. And those two tours were just you? Yeah. So that's kind of, you're rather itinerant. Uh, well, you know, I, I, I guess my, there's that cliche that music is its own reward, and I, I've always been a, a subscriber to that mindset, mm -hmm. which is that, you know, the best thing that happens when things go well is that I will get to keep working, mm -hmm. you know, um, and by working I mean playing. And that could be for other people. Yeah. Uh, you know, you've established a rather, you know, solid reputation. I mean, just those two acts. We have no idea why their bell is going off. Uh, just those two acts. But then, um, uh, you know, your solo stuff as well. Yeah. Well, I, you know, like I said, we just finished a Canadian tour, and the Canadian tour was 18 dates. Um, now, we didn't get a chance to go to the East Coast, which we will do at some point in the next six months. We'll go and do a little run on the East Coast. But, you know, eight, around 20 dates is a Canadian tour. Mm -hmm. that, that, that takes a month and a half. Well, there are ten and a half other months in a year that I personally want to keep playing. Right. And so I can spend time producing records, which I will do, or I can spend time making my own records or, you know, working on different things. But ultimately, you know, some people, I mean, not some people, most people, tour to support an album. That concept didn't even occur to me until very recently. My idea was always that the best thing that could happen to you is that you would get to play a show every night. And that was the whole point of being And it doesn't matter who you're playing with. Well, I mean, I prefer to play my own music. Mm. I really would. Um, but, but, you know, in lieu of that being realistic, I'll play with other people, mm. you know, for a few months a year. I mean, it's weird because I don't, I suppose I, you know, I could probably justify not working with somebody like Sarah or like or with rodeo or something like that, I could I could say no, I'm I'm just going to focus on my own thing. But when they call, when people like that call and say, "Would you like to come and play with us?" I have a really difficult difficult time saying no. Mm. And it's part of having grown up maybe in Winnipeg, and my dad was, you know, kind of a blue collar, table pounding socialist type guy who said like, "Get a job, work hard, be on time." Yeah. You know, so, so you're a big disappointment. Big disappointment. Yes. Yeah. You know, m me of sitting on the couch all the time, but. Uh, I, there's just this thing that I feel like when somebody says, do you want to work? I feel like the answer, of course, is yes. Now, when you work with somebody like Sarah or Blue Rodeo, yeah. um, obviously you're playing parts as dictated by someone else. At the same time, you're being exposed to other people's styles, aesthetics, and sensibilities. Right. Do you absorb those? Yeah. Well, there's, I guess there's two. I, I, think, I feel like you're asking me two different things. One is... Uh, is the supposition that I'm that somebody else is dictating, which is often the case, but on this new Sarah tour, uh, I played on the record. So mm. for the first time, although Sarah was in the studio and she was, you know, things go the way she wants them to go, and her producer's there, and of course he's, he plays a huge part too. So they contribute a lot. But ultimately, this was the first tour with Sarah where, where, you know, if she would say it doesn't go like that, I would say yeah, it does. <laughs> I played it on the record. Trust me, it goes <laughs> like this, and that was fun because you know Sarah's the boss. There's no question about it. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I, I absorb things, you know, the, the, the sort of cliched question, and I appreciate that you haven't asked me this, is what are your influences? And I always ask that the same way, which is, well, I don't really choose my influences. 
Like if I'm walking down the street and Justin Bieber is coming out of a car stereo, well, that'll influence me. It might not influence me to do what he does. It might influence me in the exact opposite way. I don't know. But I feel like we don't choose our influences. We, we can try. Like mm -hmm. we, can, we can decide what we want to do and what we want to sound like, but ultimately life will influence us however it will. Um, and fortunately, when I play with somebody like Rodeo, I mean, you know, <clears throat> I'm young enough that I was... I was still a young teenager when I first heard their music for the first time. And I remember, you know, you hear Diamond Mind or, or, or Try or Trust Yourself or, you know, all these, so these songs that, that to me were, they were the soundtrack to, to, to me reaching puberty to some degree, you know, and that's, that's pretty amazing stuff to be able to play. And I'm a fan of the Everly Brothers and the Beatles and, and, and you know, that's music very dear to the hearts of, of Blue Rodeo of, of Jim and Greg and Basil and Glenn and those guys. That's the music that, they, you know, the, you can never stray too far from that. So when I hear those guitar parts and, and I'm learning them and I have to play them, you know, it's, 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 it's almost like I'm playing, I'm playing a George Harrison part because they, they've been that influential, I think, to a lot of people, but certainly to me. And it must be kind of cool, I mean, you on stage playing the notes with those guys who wrote those songs. Yeah who influenced you as a teenager. Yeah, yeah. I mean, playing the opening lick to Till I Am Myself Again or, or, uh, or Trust Yourself, like, yeah, I get see, pretty we're not, nervous. We're not, you're not playing around here. That's the rest of the band. Yeah. They're right there. Yeah. And they're all looking at me. Yeah. yeah. Get it right, kid. Get it right, kid. Yeah. And, and like, that's unspoken or very much spoken. Yeah. You know, like, Jim's not afraid to pull me aside and go, you're messing with my songs. You know, it's, it's funny. I, he's, I, that makes him seem like a tyrant. He's, he's pretty funny. He'll, he'll give me a set list of songs to learn. Okay, here's 20 songs. Learn the 20 songs. Okay, fine. Get to the first gig. No rehearsal. Mm -hmm. That's a waste of time. They don't want to rehearse. So first gig, sound check. The, new set, the set list gets put on the stage in front of me. Well, I'm like, well, Jim, these are, what are these? He's like, oh, yeah, I made some changes. I'm like, yeah, but I didn't learn those songs. <laughs> he's like, no, nah, no, nah, it'll be fine. They're easy. I'm like, okay, well, it's your band. Sure, fine. And then you get on stage. And the 20 songs that are on the set list that were not on the set list you got in the email a month ago, now those are different. And then, so he, without even telling you, third song in, he starts playing a song you've never heard. And I'm like, what is this? And Basil's, Basil's giving me number signs for chords. <laughs> you know, he's going like, six, four. And I'm like, okay, fine. I was in a, in a band once and uh, I, I was picked up to do play drums. Yeah. I was picked up to do this one gig and he, same sort of thing. <laughs> they said, yeah, don't worry, well, you'll figure it out as we go along. I go, okay, right. that's fine. And I knew that we were always in trouble when the first song, guitar player turns around and looks at me and he goes, it's in C. <laughs> <laughs> like, you mean this one? Is that C? <laughs> uh, now that you said that, that your, your tour is just about wrapped up. Yeah. And then, well, it's Christmas, but then you've got a couple of things coming up. Yeah, well, there's the, I mean, this is the season for um, sort of Fun, fun stuff thrown together, play with your friends, mm. kind of thing. And so there's, uh, there's this Juno. Um, what is the is, which anniversary are we 40th. celebrating? Fortieth, fortieth anniversary Juno celebration. And uh, at the Horseshoe on December fourth is uh, a, a tribute to the 1970s. So I'm gonna. I mean, it, I'm kind of obsessed with the 70s. I mean, my record sounds. I think. I hope sounds like it was made in 1976. You know, it's it's got a little bit of that spirit. Uh, so I'm gonna do. Um, I'm going to do uh, Light, Gordon Lightfoot's Sundown, which is, I, I put it on my, on my record. Mm -hmm. And I've always imagined that song as a crazy horse kind of three guitar onslaught. Oh, so you're going to fuzz it up a bit? Oh, yeah, it's going to be messy. Yeah, yeah. And I, it's funny because I just assumed in my mind's eye that that's the way the song went. I mean, it's Gordon Lightfoot. He wouldn't do that. No. I just assumed, oh, yeah, it's, it's got to be pretty heavy. And then I listened to the original recording and realized, no, it's, it's Gordon Lightfoot. It's a folk song with a little bit of country, and it moves pretty slow, and it's beautiful. I thought, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tear this one a new one. And so that's the version of it that I've been doing. And I think I'm also going to either do the band's Ophelia or I'm going to do um, Neil Young's uh, Winter Long. But I think it's going to be Ophelia. Okay, that'd be a good one. Yeah. And that's all, uh, your whole bunch of different people are playing that gig. And uh, it'll, be, it'll be rather interesting. There's one coming up in February, I think, for the 80s. Okay. And then one in March, I think, for the 90s. Is that right? Yeah, so it's all leading up to the Junos at the yeah. end, in the middle of March. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, I mean, I've got, you know, this, is the, this, this, this leg of this Canadian tour is, is just finished. But like I said, there's, there are other things to be done. There'll be, fe there'll be festivals coming up in the new year, and there'll be East, Eastern dates. And, you know, I mean, I, I would like to do, I would like to tour this record. I would like to do 80 or 100 shows in, mm -hmm. in Canada. I don't know if that's possible, but I'd like to try. 
It's an awful lot of driving. It's a lot of driving or it's a lot of something, a lot of skidooing. <laughs> it's a lot of dog sledding yeah. across the country. Yeah. Especially in January and February. Not not great times for Canadian musicians, no. especially those those outlying shows. Yeah, it's a bit tough to get out there. But maybe 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 we'll reconvene and, and hit some of those markets in March when things start to get a little more manageable. The thaw. Yeah. Well, good luck with the record. I'm glad things are working out for you. Thank it's kind of neat that you can go between those two worlds, that you have the luxury of going between those two worlds. Yeah. And uh, we'll, we'll see you back here in the future when something else happens. Yeah. All right, thanks. Thanks. Explore Music wears English Laundry Apparel.